Hello, this is the Weasel with my first gasifier video. Uh, don't expect it to be polished or a production caliber type video because I've never done this before and this is my first time just trying to get something off my uh, computer screen into a video format. So it's just an informative uh, um, video on, on my gasifier project and, and what I've built. So I'd like to show it to you. This project began in uh, November of 2012 and uh, I basically uh, have been working on this thing and was able to actually uh, test run it uh, January 12 was the first time and uh, what you see here is pretty much uh, what I've built this has uh, been modeled in AutoCAD Inventor and uh, uh, this is uh, this is what my gasifier looks like I also have a uh, assembly of the uh, system which also shows the um, uh, my cyclone attachment and uh, I will also open up my drawing and uh, I'll, I'll show you some of the highlights of that basically this is an invert style uh, gasifier uh, I was able to uh, get some of the d dimensions uh, off the internet for uh, some of the various sizes for the invert so I just uh, picked one I don't have a very specific application for this gasifier other than uh, it's more of an R&D model uh, that I want to use to to learn about what's going on and, and uh, where the uh, uh, crucial areas are in the operation of a gasifier uh, um, as I indicated, I uh, have run this thing on January 12, and then I ran it also on the 19th. I got about three hours of runtime on it total. Uh, I ran it the first time with no thermocouple, so I was kind of running blind. And then I, I added a thermocouple and ran it on the 19th, and I was able to at least monitor my uh, uh, orifice temperatures. But um, uh, and I plan on my next run is on uh, February 2nd, of which I'm uh, adding some other features to. Uh, see if I can get uh, a performance out of this that I would I expect but um, basically as I said the uh, uh, the crucial areas on the invert for the dimensions I could find was the uh, hearth area the diameter of the hearth the nozzles the tweers uh, the uh, the reduced uh, or reduction zone which in this particular case I'm using an orifice plate I'm not using any kind of a uh, an hourglass profile uh, one of the things I did do differently is I have a flange down here it's a bolt-on flange with a riser in the center and that's what supports my orifice plate so I can service the orifice plate I can change the diameter if I think I need to change the diameter I can also change the height of the orifice plate uh, and what I did do is I actually went and I drilled a hole in the edge of this orifice plate which I could show you on my gasifier assembly here um, I added a whoops not that one let's try this one I added a hole which uh, you might be able to see that right here and it actually is through this uh, hearth and then into the orifice plate and that's where I slide my thermocouple so I can actually get a temperature of the gases coming right through that their orifice plate and uh, what I also do is um, uh, this area here, this vacant area that you see between my hearth wall and this ring, I fill it up with ashes. I fill it up with ashes so I don't have any gas leakage around the edge and uh, so that ensures that all the gases go down through the actual uh, orifice plate. Uh, what I have also here is a tube and shell counterflow heat exchanger where my incoming air is, uh, uh, is preheated be, uh, by the outgoing gas. The gases uh, going up this tube are cooled by the incoming air and in turn the combustion air is uh, preheated. I have that feature on here. I also have a um, uh, removable, well, I already mentioned the removable orifice plate. I've got the thermocouple placement in the orifice plate. I've also got this grate that's on a hinge and I haven't hooked up a uh, any kind of a motor to it yet but uh, my intent is to go and put a um, uh, some kind of a motor on here because when I move this thing I can actually uh, move the grate up and down as you can see I can actually raise and lower the grate by moving this handle and that's what I use to shake it down. Uh, this here uh, rod you see right here is my latest thermocouple. I have a thermocouple now directly above my grate and that's what I uh, another temperature that I want to monitor. Uh, my grate 
is actually quite a bit larger than the um, bottom of the hearth so I have a um, uh, the, the ashes the char ash coming down and uh, falling off the uh, edges and uh, through some of the holes on the uh, on the grate as it runs I have a cone on the bottom of my 55 gallon drum and a 6 inch clean out down here and uh, my hopper is about a 16 inch diameter old galvanized uh, 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 water water pressure tank that I had laying out in a junk pile that I uh, was able to recondition for this. Um, I've got some nozzles uh, here, here. There's this one here is for pre uh, measuring pressure on the upside of my orifice plate. This one here measures pressure on the downside of my orifice plate, and this one measures my air pressure coming in. And uh, let's see, and here's my gas out. If you look at my assembly, you can see that here I've got my little cyclone uh, filter on there. Uh, going back to the drawing, um, I pretty much have uh, uh, discussed everything on here other than one last thing, and that is uh, I have a uh, 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 I have a ball valve on this here port for my incoming air, and I'm running a positive pressure gasifier. I'm not running my gas fire negative air pressure, but positive. The only time I use negative air pressure is just to light it because I need a negative air through through, through my ignition port uh, to light it. But other than that, I'm using a positive air pressure, an old vacuum cleaner, uh, turned around backwards so I can actually uh, force air into this unit. And I run between 5 and 7 inches of water pressure in the unit. And uh, I just think it's simpler to where I don't have to have the gases going through my blower and cooking my motor and or having to find a high temperature uh, blower so I'm running a positive pressure uh, gasifier and uh, it's it's so far it's worked fine I have pins welded on my cover and on the sides where I've got a couple of springs that I use to hold the lid down I'm using a, um, a high temperature uh, silicone uh, foam tape that I got from McMaster car around my cover to seal that as well as around these this front door and around this door so um, that works out very well and I can maintain uh, the pressure that I need to run my gasifier but that's pretty much what I've built and what I'd like to do is uh, follow up in the next day or two and get out uh, in the garage with my camera and take some a video of my gasifier I don't know if I'll be able to do that when I get it running unless I've got some extra hands here to uh, to help me as uh, I run this thing but uh, my intent is to uh, run my gasifier and be able to produce uh, with consistency a good uh, clean gas even before I get to any kind of filtering and from there I'm either going to develop one for an automobile or develop one for a new outdoor wood boiler for my home which is the primary reason I even got into this uh, whole uh, endeavor but I'm fascinated by it I've been able to produce some gas and uh, but the gas can be of different qualities and so far I haven't quite got where I want to go but I appreciate you um, stay in tune and looking at my video and if you got any questions you can sure ask me there's nothing proprietary here this is all for fun thanks and have a great day